do not think you can see it, but you know what I mean exercises. Okay. Come to page 4 and we have F 2 properties of fluids and the first law set 2. F 2.0 is about plotting the various things which I leave to yourself. Let us look at 2.1. This is the simplest of the lot and the first ability we need to gain and uh, the ability which we want our students to learn is to given some two properties find out two other properties. Okay. Now, here we have F 2.1, it is given that we have 1 kg of water substance water substance is ordinary water substance in a closed system and some two properties are given or a property and some specification is given and we have to determine H, V, X and S as appropriate. We will soon define X, but remember we first need to look at the D and E part, A and B it is very clear. We are given saturated liquid at 5 bar and saturated vapor if otherwise mentioned unless otherwise mentioned saturated vapor is dry saturated vapor at 10 bar. So, you can read out these properties at uh, from the steam table. Now, look at D and E. Here we have a P naught given and a T naught given. And we have to determine first whether it is subcooled liquid, the superheated steam and then read out the other properties. So, when P naught and T naught is given, we should do first the following. If P naught is greater than P critical or T naught is greater than T critical, then we have simply supercritical steam. It becomes horrible here. Otherwise, we proceed as follows. Either either A determine T sat at P naught. Okay. If T naught is greater than T sat at P naught, then what do we have? We have superheated steam. If T naught is less than T sat at P naught, then we have sub cooled liquid. Or B determine that means read off P sat corresponding to T naught. Here the equality change. If P naught is less than P sat at T naught, then we have superheated steam and if 
P naught is greater than sorry this should be P naught, P sat at T naught then you have sub cooled liquid. This is very clear from our phase diagram or P T diagram. P naught T naught is given. In the first case, we are calculating the saturation pressure at P naught. Suppose, this is P naught, then this is sorry, how did it go back? Suppose, this is P naught, draw this line, this line, then this is T sat at P naught. And then, if the given temperature T naught is higher than this, we are in superheated uh, steam zone. If it is lower than this, we are in the subcooled liquid zone. Or, if T naught is given, then we go like this, this is P sat at T naught. Then we look at the pressure. If the pressure is lower than the P sat at T naught, then we are in the superheated vapor zone. If it is higher than P sat at T naught, then we are in the subcooled liquid zone. Now, the question arises is what happens if we find that we are exactly on this line somewhere? That is the saturation pressure and temperature. Uh, sorry P naught and T naught correspond exactly to the saturation line. And that means, we have liquid and vapor together as we have seen earlier, liquid and vapor in equilibrium. This is the thermodynamic name for this. The technical name for this is wet vapor and let us look at it like that. When we have wet vapor liquid plus vapor in equilibrium and that means, P and T are not independent. So, we must select either P or T, any one, not both. And some other property to completely define the state of the system. Let us draw two figures, say pressure, temperature, our normal phase plot. And let us say that our state lies exactly on this line. Then we do not know whether it is liquid or it is vapor. In which we case, now we say that the phase rule says pressure and temperature are not independent, only one of them can be used. So, let us use pressure say. So, instead of temperature, now we use some other property. Let us say that we decide to use volume. Then, on the volume plane, the states look like this. If this is the critical point, the will look like this. This is not to scale, 
if I plot it to scale, it will be pretty wide. Here we have the subcooled liquid zone, here we have the superheated vapor zone and this point here gets stretched from the saturated liquid F state to the dry saturated vapor G state. And the state, the actual state of the system could be anything from here, which is saturated liquid to here dry saturated liquid or anything else in between. And now you can see that the pressure could be this, but depending on the volume, the state could be if the volume is this much, the state could be saturated liquid. If the volume is V g, the state could be dry saturated vapor. If the volume is anything in between here, 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 the state would be from here to here wet vapor. Now, I have selected volume, one can select enthalpy, one can select entropy, one can select internal energy. The characteristic is going to look very similar. There is going to be a liquid point, there is going to be a vapor point and there is going to be the wet vapor in between. This is the critical point where we have seen that the distinction between liquid and vapor vanishes. So, the liquid point will be at the top of this. On this curve, when you plot it like this, this side from the critical point containing all the saturated liquid states is known as the saturated liquid line. And similarly, these states from the critical point downwards containing uh, states of dry saturated vapor is known as the dry sat vapor line. Okay. Now, remember that we have selected P as between P and T, but I have here selected V. Someone may select V, someone may select U, someone may select H, someone may select S and there will be some confusion. So, we decide on a common parameter, which is really of convenience to us and for that, we define what is known as a dryness fraction. The symbol given to this is H and the idea is like this. Whenever you have liquid and vapor in equilibrium, it could be almost all liquid, no vapor that will be saturated liquid or all vapor, hardly any liquid that will be dry saturated vapor. Let us say the mass of the vapor part is m g, mass of the liquid part is m f. Then the total mass of the system is m g plus m f and we define the dryness fraction as the mass fraction of the vapor, mass of the vapor divided by mass of liquid plus mass sorry m f plus m g. Okay. What does this mean? This means that for the saturated liquid state, x f will be 0, because there will be no vapor, everything will be liquid. And for dry saturated vapor state, x g will be 1. And for the in between states, 
wet vapor x will be between 0 and 1. This is the legal range 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1 on our P and either V or U or S or H diagram. This is the saturated liquid line, this is the dry saturated vapor line and if you take a pressure, this is the saturated liquid state point, this is the dry saturated vapor state point. So, this will be x equal to 0, this will be x equal to 1 and somewhere here all through this is 0 less than x less than 1. This is wet vapor. Now, in terms of x, it is not difficult to determine other properties and it will be very clear. Now, suppose we want to determine uh, the volume, let me put the title as properties of wet vapor. Now, we know volume is an extensive property. So, if a system contains a liquid and vapor, the total volume of the uh, system will be made up of the liquid volume and the vapor volume. The mass will be mass of the liquid part plus mass of the vapor part. And what about the volume? The liquid have a volume, liquid will be in the saturated liquid state because liquid and vapor are in equilibrium. So, the liquid volume will be mass of the liquid part into specific volume of the liquid plus mass of the vapor part see G into specific volume of the vapor and this will be the total volume m into specific volume of the whole system. Okay. And what is this? m f is nothing but 1 minus x into m into v f plus m g is x into m into v g and that gives you this formula v will be 1 minus x into v f plus x into v g and similar formulae can be derived for u, h and s. You can write out these formulas, leave some space and you can write out these formulas. You can turn this around and transpose this to solve for x. We know that specific volume is 1 minus x into V f plus x into V g for wet vapor. And so, if you solve for x, you will get V minus V f divided by V g minus V f. And from similar formulae which I have asked you to write for u, h and s, you will get u minus u f, u g minus u f h minus h f, h g minus h f, s minus s f, s g minus s f. 
and now you notice that it is here that these properties v g minus v f, u g minus u f, h g minus h f and s g minus h f. The differences between the g properties and f properties turn up and the uh, authors of the steam tables have decided to tabulate at least s g minus s f and h g minus s f as h f g and s f g respectively. These will be, these are in our steam tables, not all steam tables may have it. Now, let us come to F 2.2. With uh, our understanding of the dryness fraction, you can tackle F 2.1 part C, wet steam of quality. The only thing one has to remember that quality is another name for dryness fraction, that is it. Now, in F uh, 2.2, the characteristic of this question is two properties are given. And we have to determine whether it is uh, subcooled liquid, superheated steam. Uh, wet steam, dry saturated steam or dry uh, or uh, saturated liquid etcetera, etcetera. If you look at some of these options, take for example, option A or option B. We straight away have pressure and temperature specified we know how to tackle those cases. For example, if you come to option A, 2.F 2.2A, it is given to be a pressure of 2 bar, temperature of 150 degrees C. You can come to say table 2, 2 bar, Saturation temperature is 120.2 degrees C. Oh, sorry, first one is 1 bar. 1 bar saturation temperature is 99.6 degrees C. The specified temperature 150 degrees C is higher than 99.6. So, we are in the superheated vapor zone. You can even look at it the other way. Come to table 1. and look up the entry for 150 degrees C. At 150 degrees C, the saturation pressure is 4.758 bar. The specified pressure is less than 4.78 bar. So, it is superheated steam. In a similar way, you can tackle B. The last item, T, 100 degrees C, x point 0.8, the item i. It is very obvious that since the dryness fraction is 0.8, it is wet vapor. And if you want to determine properties, all that you have to do is go to 100 degrees C and read off the saturated liquid values and dry saturated vapor values and use the formulae which we have just derived formulae like this or formulae like this. I hope you have written all these four formulas. Now, V f, V g, U f, U g can be read off from our table and use the dryness fraction value provided 0 0.8 to compute out all the properties. So, we have so far looked at A B and I. Now, among the other options, notice the options 
C, D, G and H. C, D, G, H. You will notice that of the two properties, one property is either pressure or temperature. In C, D and H, the pressure is specified 2 bar, 2 bar and 0.5 bar respectively, whereas in H, temperature is specified. So, one of the property is P or T and the other property is either H, S or V. Here in C it is S, in D it is V, in H and G and H it is H. So, this is, uh, since it is 1 kg of water substance, I can easily convert them to specific volume and other specific property V, U, H or S. We do not have an illustration of U, but that could also be added. Now, when it is uh, of this form, this is what one should remember. Let me go to the next page. This is a qualitative diagram. If you plot on one axis P or T okay. and on the other axis a property phi which could be V or U or H or S. The uh, you end up with an inverted dome. This line could be straight down or this line could be a shallow like this or this line sometime could even come in. That So, this could be very, very shallow as in case of specific volume. In case of enthalpy, it will go down like this, but that is a minor variation. At the top is the critical point. Okay. This is subcooled liquid, this is superheated vapor and this is wet steam. And if you take any pressure or any temperature and as you traverse around this line, you will notice that any one of these properties satisfy this characteristic. That phi, a property of subcooled liquid will be less than the property of saturated liquid will be less than the property of wet steam, which will be less than the property of dry saturated vapor, which will be less than the same property for superheated steam. This is what one should remember and you can look up the steam table, maybe plot the graphs, you will be confirming this. So long as you are below critical pressure or critical temperature, this inequality or this qualitative relation will hold for any one of these four properties, specific volume, specific internal energy, specific enthalpy or specific entropy. And if you remember this, it is easy to solve any one of these four sub problems in F 2.2. Take for example, F 2.2, let us take C, P is 2 bar, S because it is 1 kg, I can write S at 6.2 kilojoule per 
kilogram Kelvin. I am just dividing the value by. Now, if you go to our table 2, the pressure based saturation table, that is where one should go. At 2 bar, look at the entropy value. At 2 bar, at 2 bar S f is how much was it? At 2 bar S f is 1.530. S g is 7.127, 1.530, S g is 7.127, right, or 217, 7.127. So, at 2 bar, we read off from table 2, S f is 1.530 kilo joule per kilogram Kelvin, S g is 7.127 kilo joule per kilogram Kelvin. Get into a habit and enforce this habit on our students that whenever you write a quantity, you must write the units with it. Do not even ever leave a quantity hanging without its unit. Of course, dryness fraction does not have any units and there may be a few other uh, properties or uh, parameters which may not have units, but most of the properties will have units and the numerical value of a property does not mean anything unless you have units associated with them. But anyway, after noticing this, you will notice that S f is less than S is less than S g. Hence, what we have is wet Once you have wet steam, now you can calculate the dryness fraction. If you want to, x will be S minus S f, S g minus S f. And once you get x, you can determine all other properties, u, v, h, etcetera, etcetera. Okay. I will uh, leave it to you to try out D, G and H on your own. Okay. Now, that uh, leaves E and F. What do we do with this? Okay. Because both of these are of the H S kind and we do not have H as an independent variable nor do we have S as an independent variable anywhere. So, how do we proceed? We have to proceed in a graphical manner or we have to do what I call uh, Sherlock Holmes Giri. Just look at our saturation table, look at the pressure table and look at this is something all of us should know, because we are going to use steam tables for the rest of our lives and many of our students will also use the steam table for a significant part of their life. Look at table 2. Notice that the specific enthalpy of dry saturated vapor at triple point is 2501.4 kilo joule per kilogram. It goes on increasing 2600, 2700, but then you see, you notice that it is not increasing that fast, 2763, 
2700, oh it started going back and now you will notice that there is a maximum of somewhere here 2804.2 at about 30 bar. So, the specific enthalpy of dry saturated vapor is 2804.2 at 30 bar and that is the maximum specific enthalpy of any vapor. If the specific enthalpy of any um, state is higher than 2804.2 kilojoule per kilogram, well it has to be either uh, superheated or supercritical steam. So, when you look at E, specific enthalpy is 2900 kilojoule per kilogram, which is definitely higher than 2804.2 kilojoule per kilogram and that means E is this E is going to be superheated steam. Okay. Superheated or supercritical, there is there is not much difference in them as we have seen during our tabulation. The F part is going to be more difficult because uh, we cannot use the same trick which we used in H. It is 2500 kilojoule per kilogram specific enthalpy and specific entropy is 8.8 .8 kilojoule per kilogram. Either you will have to do trial and error or interpolation, but then most of our tables also will have a chart associated with them. And although we have been so far sketching charts with P or T on one axis, y axis and uh, v, u, h or s on the h axis. It turns out that when it comes to open thermodynamic systems, particularly like uh, turbines, compressors and pumps, another diagram comes becomes very useful and that is the diagram in which enthalpy and entropy are plotted as independent variables. And this is known as the Mollier diagram. Uh, our steam tables, and you should uh, open out the back of this. see this diagram. Okay. What I have done is rather than I tried to scan it, but it does not look nice. On the ELMO, it is too cluttered for you to see. So, I have uh, obtained, uh, I went to the web. which was that diagram which I came up. I think it is here, yes. They can see this? No. Okay. So, this is from a website engineeringtoolbox.com. You just put uh, Mollier or H S diagram for steam. Do not put Mollier diagram because the word Mollier diagram is used for many other properties, even what we call psychrometric chart is quite often known as. Uh, so, look at this as the qualitative version of the diagram which you have at the uh, end of your chart. So, I am going to project this, but I want all of you to look at your diagram. Okay. Now, notice the uh, line, the red line which is going like a big wave across this. Uh, can you show my paper for a time being? 
the show the idea pad show this oh idhar se hi karna hai uh, okay if we plot generally we have been plotting things from the triple point to the critical point and beyond beyond so if you take the same range on the uh, hs diagram and start from the triple point the triple point pressure line goes like this and the dry uh, sorry saturated liquid line goes like this with a critical point here and the dry saturated vapor line goes like this the critical point is here and all this part is very cluttered and is of no use to us and that is why the diagram which is plotted is this part of the diagram and that is why you will notice that in our diagram the entropy goes from 5.5 to 9 kilo joule per kilogram Kelvin, lower values are not shown and enthalpy goes from 2000 to uh, nearly 4000 kilo joule per kilogram. So, this is a clipped version of the diagram. Now, coming to the Mollier diagram which you are seeing, uh, I can do it from here. See this, uh, this they can see the mouse, no? Oh, sorry, it should not go back. Inadvertently, I should not double touch or anything. This line is the the red line is the dry saturated vapor line. Okay. The various isobars are these slanted blue lines. In our diagram, the various isobars are slanted, everything is black, that is good, there are no color confusion here, but you can see the isobar shown there for various pressures, they are all slanted lines. And then this is the zone of superheated vapor where you will see isotherms. In this figure, the isotherm of say 400 degrees C, it is seen here going to the left and then going down like this. You should be able to notice isotherms also in your uh, Molière diagram. Okay. And uh, unfortunately, in this distance mode, it is very difficult for us to have a feedback, but since most of you would have seen this earlier, spend time and be comfortable with it. Now, see the advantage of this and I would like you to look at it only qualitatively. When you come to exercise 2.2 part f, we have H uh, specific enthalpy of 2500 kilo joule per kilogram. So, you take the 2500 line and 8.8 .8, uh, kilo joule per kilogram Kelvin entropy line and you will find that the point lies in the wet steam zone that is below that wavy line. And if you look at the line surrounding it, the pressure is between 0 0.01 bar and 0 0.02 bar. If you um, visually interpolate, maybe you can say 0 0.012 bar. And the other characteristic is you can see that the dryness fraction is approximately 0 0.99 because the that line almost goes through that point. Okay. But do not read off these values except as approximate values. The exact values now you will have to knowing that it is wet vapor, knowing that it is approximately 0 0.012 bar, go to table 1 and 2 and interpolate and obtain a more uh, exact answer. Okay. Uh, 
the chart gives you a very nice visual description in the part of the state space, but that is what it is good for. It is not good for reading values except approximately. The table is more precise, the table is more precise, but it has discrete values unlike the chart which is continuous. So, you will have to interpolate okay. and so my thing is use the chart for visual uh, appreciation and use the table if necessary with interpolation for actual calculations. Now, I notice that it is a few minutes past 1 o'clock. So, let us break for lunch and we will meet again after lunch. Mm -hmm.